Hello everyone, welcome to this video about the fundamental shapes on the guitar neck that are the basis of the Van Hamert system, which is a system I devised to get a quick start into learning how to improvise on the guitar in jazz. Coming right up. So I have a couple of Skype students and one of my students asked me recently, his name is David Kelly, he asked me if I could make a PDF, a tab with the fundamental shapes of my system because he was checking or he has been, he has been checking my videos for a long time, especially the video with the loops, Gypsy Jazz Loops, I will link it. And I talk about uh, some of those shapes and I show them in, this, in the form of loops and I demonstrate them. And he said that was very handy, but he was kind of hoping for a document in which I would lay out those shapes in a kind of abstract fashion without uh, relating them directly to music so that he could just practice those shapes. And I thought to myself, you know what, that is a very good idea. So I did it and I'm just making a video about those shapes now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play through all the shapes and then I'm going to demonstrate how I would use them on different songs. Uh, I will use some backing tracks on my channel. So let's go to the first shape. Now, before we get started, I want to say something about the tab. I know it's really small and um, I always get comments about that. And I want to explain why that is. Um, the tab is actually only on screen uh, for my patrons so that they know uh, what I'm talking about because they can download the tabs and then they can can print them out and they can have them as big as they want and so the tab is an extra service for my patrons and some people are uh, saying that that is a I don't know a sneaky business strategy but here here's the here's the deal right the only reason I can make these videos uh, with the intensity that I'm doing it like the amount of videos and uh, the content I'm providing to you in the videos is because of my patrons and because they are supporting me I can do this so at one point um, I don't know a couple of months ago when I had the tabs st still very big a couple of my patrons at least told me you know what um, with the tab that big in the screen we kind of feel I mean, we still want to support you, but it would be nice if the tab would be something that is exclusive to us patrons. And I was thinking to myself, they are absolutely right, right? They are actually providing me the means to do this, so they would deserve extra benefit. So I decided to make the tab smaller. Actually, they suggested it, and <laughs> lo and behold, my patron grew exponentially. So I'm not going to change that. Um, you can always watch these videos for free. And I play through all the, the tabs slowly and fast so you can figure them out for yourself. Or you can join my Patreon and you can download all these tabs and get access to a lot of exclusive content, which I make only for the, for the patrons. Um, so that is it. Um, I just wanted to explain myself. Also, um, check the description for two gypsy camps that I'll be teaching and performing at next year in Greece and the UK, there will be links to that. Let's get started with these shapes. So it's divided into ascending shapes and descending shapes. I'm going to play through all of it, uh, give you some tips on how to play it, how to practice it. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to demonstrate it so you can see what it would sound like in a real improvisation. So the first shape is a major, sh uh, major seven shape, and it's basically uh, all the same notes, it's three shapes. They are different shapes, but it's the same notes. So this is the first one. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. First shape, just a major seven shape, and I start on the major seven, and I end on the major seven. Now this shape I would use on major seven chords, C major seven in this case, or on a minor 7, it's a great shape for that, um, and I would use it on D7, and even sometimes on B7. So I'm going to demonstrate some of it at the end of the video. Second shape, same notes, is this one. One, two, three, four. Two, three, 
four. Yeah, and then the third shape, same notes again, three, four. Two, three, four. So, of course, you got to practice this shape in different keys. So this would be C major seven shape, but then practice like F major seven. So you realize, okay, I have to start on the major seven, put your first finger on the major seven, which is an E, and then play the same shape. That would be the first shape, second shape, third shape. Okay, one more, let's do um, B flat seven. First shape. Second shape. Third shape. Okay, so you could practice this in uh, like the circle fifths or just practice them uh, randomly or chromatically, whatever. Just you gotta know this shape to understand, to get fluent in my system. Okay, let's go to the next shape. It's another ascending shape and it's the diminished arpeggio. And there's two shapes, it's almost the same notes. The second shape has one note extra. Um, B diminished, first shape. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Notice that I'm using only three fingers. Now I'm using a white position, which means there's a gap between my first and second finger, and I'm not using my pinky. That's my preferred way to play diminished, because I can just play it much faster than if I would play it like this. Which is possible, but I want to play it like this. Right? I want to play diminished that fast. So that's just much harder to do with the fourth finger, so that's why I use three fingers. The second shape is basically um, the same shape, only uh, instead of playing one note on the e low E string and starting with my third finger, I'm starting on that note with my first finger, I'm playing two notes on it. Now I would also practice the shape starting on the um, A string, but it's the same, you just start on the second note in the first shape, so on the D. And in the second shape you start on the, um, on the F. But that's actually the same. I would start, sorry, let's do it like this. Start on the D and start on the F, but then with your third, third finger. So um, those are just partials of the first shape, right? So it's two shapes, but then also start these shapes on the A string. Um, yeah. Now you might ask, why, why are you only practicing, practicing these shapes ascending? That's because I only use these shapes ascending. I rarely play a diminished arpeggio descending. Of course, I could do that, but that's not part of this um, fundamental shapes thing. I would use this on uh, G7, on B flat 7, on uh, D flat 7, and on E7. That it would fit all those chords. And it would even fit on, of course, it would fit on B diminished as well, but then also on um, D diminished, F diminished, A flat diminished. And you could even play it on, um, well, let's, let's, keep it, uh, let's keep it to diminished and dominant chords. So again, B diminished, D diminished, F diminished, A flat diminished, and then G7, B flat 7, uh, D flat 7, and E7. Okay, now we get to descending shapes. So here's the first one, D minus six. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Right? Of course, you gotta practice this in all keys again, also with diminished, but let's say uh, G minus six. So I put my first finger on the third of the chord and I just play the same fingering. Uh, C minor, uh, C minor six, uh, E flat minor six, mm, B minor six. Put my first finger on the third of B minor. It's a D. So this shape you could also practice going up. I 
I do use I do use that sometimes, but mostly down. So that's the most important thing. So where would I use D minor six? I would use it on G7. Well, I would use it on D minor, obviously, but mostly on G7, on E7. So uh, G7, E7, and on D flat seven. But it would fit on all of those chords. Amazing, but really. And then we get um, Phrygian dominant scales starting from every chord tone. I made a video about this separately, but I'm just going to go through the fingers again. So G7, Phrygian dominant scale, starting with my first finger on the root of G7. It's a G, and the skill sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Only uh, descending. No, no need to play them ascending. I, I, I probably can't even play them ascending. I never play them ascending. They just sound much better descending. So this is for G7. Then starting the same scale with my first finger on the third of G7. Sounds like this. Three, four. It's exactly the same scale. It's G fridge and dominant. I just start on a different note. Now starting on the fifth. To D again, same skill G Phrygian dominant, but starting on the fifth three four three four, and then the last uh, oh this was the next, and then the last uh, option starting with my first finger on the seven of G seven is an F again, same skill G Phrygian dominant starting on the seven one two three four. Three, four. All right, those are all the scale uh, shapes of the Phrygian dominant that I use. I don't start on any every note of the scale. They just sound best when you start on a chord tone. So from the root, from the third, from the fifth, from the seventh. Again, practice every key. So let's say, let's give one example. We want to play A flat, fridge and dominant from the third. So we have to play it from a C. A7, right? Let's play um, E flat seven from the seven. So E flat seven, the seventh is a D flat. One more, let's play F7 from the root. No, let's play it from the from the fifth. So F7. You gotta be very fluent with them. And uh, even though I was thinking a little bit now, you should be able to do it without thinking uh, too much about it. Okay, and now we get to the last shapes uh, these are altered shapes and now you might say oh you're using an altered scale or a super lokian scale no i'm using part of the altered scale and i could explain to you uh, how that works i will but i never think about it that way but i will explain it so let's say i want to play this altered shape again we're talking about g7 then i would think about a major scale uh, minus sixth up so it's the e flat major scale right <laughs> The first five notes, one, two, three, four, five, and go up a half note. And I would play that going down. And then just the same pattern octave lower. So, or let's say C. Uh, C, I want to play that shape, altered shape on C7. So I would think a minor six up is A flat major. So A flat major skill. First five notes, go up half. And now play that pattern down, only down. Right? That's the theory, but I never think about it. I just have certain shapes I use, so I know the fingerings. So again, going back to G7, first one starting from the root, sounds like this, three, four. Three, four. Now starting it from the third, 
And here, um, if I would play it, so the third is not part of this scale, right? So I would play this note and then go into the scale. And I would skip the B flat here, just because it sounds better if I go from the third to the A flat and then I play that scale. Okay, then play from the fifth. Again, the fifth, the D is not part of that scale again. So, oh, let's go to that. I play a different version of it. And there's two versions I play. I wrote them both here. First one sounds like this, three, four. Three, four. Right, or I would start it, uh, now I start with a quarter note, but I could also start on the one end like this, three, four, one. So I don't go, go all the way down to the E string. This is the way I would play it. Or uh, I use an, 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 another shape, which I use, in, use more often, probably 90% of the time, I would use this shape, three, four. So again, all the shapes from the root, from the third, from the fifth, uh, first shape, second shape. Okay, so those are all the patterns, the fundamental shapes of the Van Hamert system. So you gotta learn all these shapes in, I wanna say every key, but maybe the, the best thing to do is to just pick a song and then uh, practice those shapes on that song and start improvising with them. So let me demonstrate that. So. Let's go to a, my backing track playlist and I put them in um, in alphabetical order today. So now when you open my playlist, the first song on it will be uh, will be Ergin and then All of Me. So let's go to All of Me. That's a good song to practice. So it's in C, right? So on C major, what I would do is I, I would use my first shape going up. Right, I have no shape in this system for going down on C major seven. Of course I have shapes, but they're not fundamental. So uh, when I wanna only use the fundamental shapes on my system, I can only play this shape up. Right, in real life, I have shapes going down like this. But those are not really part of the fundamental shapes. Just, or. So that would, I would play that the first two bars, it's C. Of course, I don't have to play eighth notes. I could just improvise a little bit with the shape. You could just add some chromatic notes. You got to experiment with the shape. And then we get E7. So on E7, I have a couple of options. For instance, I can play the same shape on E7. Which one would I use? I would use the D major shape. D major seven sounds great on E seven. You get a E sus sound. That would be one option. Another option would be to play um, my second shape, which or the diminished arpeggio. So I could use the B diminished or a G sharp diminished. or D diminished, or F diminished. And I could all start all these shapes also from the A string, for example, B diminished, D diminished, F diminished, G sharp diminished, or start all those shapes with my third finger. I know I'm going really fast, but you can just watch it over again, over and over, make some notes. I could use on E7, my third shape going down, I could use a minor six arpeggio. So which ones could I use? I could use, the first one would be D, uh, B minor six. The second one would be D minor six. And the third one would be F minor six. 
So what I could play up, I could play D major seven up, and then go down with a minor six arpeggio. I have several options, but the closest one to this one would be B minor six or or or. So now I'm connecting D major seven to one of three minor six arpeggios. The first option would be to go down with uh, F minor six, for example. Or go down with B minus um, six right here. Or make a connection to um, D minor six. Okay, what could I? What else could I use on E7? I could use all these Phrygian dominant skills. So I could play this skill down from the root or from the third, from the fifth. The seven, right? I could use all those altered shapes. You get the drift, right? So let me improvise on C to E7 and go on to A7. On A7, I could use the same options, but it's all A7. And then on D minor, I can use D minor six shape or F major seven, F major seven. So let me make a plan. So I'm gonna play C major seven shape up on the on the C chord. On E7, let's make a decision. Let's play, let's play the Phrygian dominant skill down from the third. So I'm gonna go up C major seven. Phrygian dominant skill down. Then let's go up with a with a diminished on A7, C sharp diminished. And then go down with D minor six. Right, those are my shapes. C major seven, Virgin dominant down, C sharp diminished, D minor six. Here we go. Okay. Maybe a little bit louder. Um, let's do it again. Same shapes, but uh, I'll improvise a little bit differently. Maybe start on a different beat, maybe play some other embellishments or some other rhythms, but it's the same shapes. One more time. Let's do the same thing, but use different shapes. Go up with C major seven on the C, then let's go down with B minor six on the E7. And then let's go up with G major seven on the A7, and then go up again on the D minor seven with F major seven. Now this all sounds very complicated, but you just gotta drill yourself to learn these shapes and play them over the chords. So to end, I just wanna play a solo where I'm only gonna use these shapes. I'm, an, I'm not gonna use anything else. Of course, I, may, I might use embellishments and shift in time, but you can hear it will just sound like a, like a nice solo. I'm gonna play the whole song. <laughs>
as you can hear, that's that's a completely convincing solo, I think. Now, imagine this. So this is the basis of my improvisational language. These shapes, and I mean, that's not a lot of language, right? Um, you could learn these shapes probably within six months. Uh, and to be able to play convincing with them maybe would take a year. And then what I would do is I would learn lots of other phrases and they go in between the shapes, right? They are there to li liven up the shapes. So let me play another solo uh, and I will just improvise freely. And you will see that the shapes are part of the solo, but there's lots of other phrases, which is just the phrases I show you in the videos, right? Uh, phrases by Django, phrases by, I don't know, uh, Joe Pass, phrases by Phil Woods. Those are the phrases that are there to, I don't want to say hide the fundamental shapes, but to make the fundamental shapes, to connect the fundamental shapes. So here we go. Yeah, I, I know this might, it can seem impossible to go from the shapes to this, but that's actually what I did, right? I, I practiced my ass off on those shapes and I can play very convincing solos with only those shapes and maybe a little, little bit on top, maybe some of the stuff from my loops video, some of the stuff, stuff from my uh, major seven shape videos and diminished, uh, uh, diminished uh, language, diminished vocabulary. And then I started building more and more vocabulary based on artists I admire. And that's how I did it. And there's, a, there, there's also a point to make that there's no real theory involved because it's all based on shapes and licks. But I think it still sounds very convincing, very free. I also feel very free. Uh, even when I play chord voicings, th those are not based on like theoretical uh, knowledge or... 
drop two voicings or voice leading. It's all based on just same principle. I just learn chord uh, voicings I like and I string them together. That was it for this video. I hope I didn't overwhelm you too much. If I did, you can always ask me questions. And um, if you want access to the tab, of course, there's my Patreon. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Uh, oh yeah, subscribe, like, bye.